Good afternoon, everybody. Wanted to jump on here and address a few questions and concerns that you guys may have had concerning our last episode, which we knew anytime you take on a case like that, there's gonna be some controversy with it. So let's look at one of the big questions, the main questions. Do you think their videos are fake? Yes. And we've never claimed that their videos were real. As far as using those clips in the episode, it was more to show people the background of the case. My brothers and I have been investigating the paranormal for well over 20 years, have done thousands of family haunting cases, and this type of stuff you just do not see. As far as furniture and all that stuff lying across the room and moving, it's just something that you just do not document. I remember my brothers and I, one of our very first family hauntings, we caught a family faking stuff. The kind of set it up is we were, we had a DVR system set up throughout the house. We were doing our investigation. We had a command post set up in the garage and we were outside in the garage watching the footage and the mother was inside the house and we watched her one video kick a hamper across the room and then started screaming that it threw a hamper across the room when we visibly watched her do this. So yes, there are families out there that fake things for the most part. The families that we work with are honest about everything. But yeah, one of our very first family hauntings, the family, you know, we caught them faking stuff. And I think because we were so naive early on, now this is like 20 years ago, we were so naive that we just didn't, we expected when the families reached out to you and wanted help, that they were being completely honest with you. So that was just kind of the growing process that, you know, always be alert that people can fake stuff and embellish stuff. Also with a lot of you guys who have followed us over the years, when we catch a family faking stuff, like with the exorcist case with Ethan, we have no problem pointing that out. As far as this case, we were not familiar with this case, at least I wasn't personally, because one, I'm just not on TikTok and I don't follow cases like this. I always refer to them as TikTok hauntings. And as you guys know, people that's on TikTok and follow this stuff, there's quite a few cases out there like that. We typically avoid those cases. We get probably four or five of them throughout the years and we just don't even pay them any attention and don't investigate those cases. This particular case, we'd had several people email us like constantly, hey, can you guys look into this case? Hey, this family's got all this stuff going on. Can you guys go in and see if you can help this family? I went and watched one of their videos and I don't think it was like anything like super crazy. So I was thinking, okay, they may have something going on here. But then as I went into TikTok and started watching all their videos, then I knew obviously, you know, they're faking the evidence. As people kept contacting us about the case, you know, it was always 50-50 on whether they believed or didn't believe what was going on there. But the main concern people had was, did this family open up a doorway to something super negative and are the children in danger? And then we also learned that Liz had just had a newborn. So our concern wasn't the evidence that they were putting forward, but our concern was by them doing so and getting into all this dark stuff like the Ouija boards, the uh, Shrine to Satan, could they have opened up a doorway and put their family in danger? That was the main question. And then I had a close friend of ours who we've known for years reach out and she said, hey, I know you guys are super busy. Can you at least go check out this case, bless the house, bless the family, and talk to them about what they're doing and how it could take a turn for the worst. And we'd put this case off for several months before we even went back up there. We kind of left it as, you know, right now we're focusing on these other family hauntings if we get a break, we'll run up there and see what's going on with this family. The reason we went up to this haunting was not because of the evidence that they put out there, the videos that they put out there. That had nothing to do with our decision. Our decision was, is this family putting their children in danger? Are they putting themselves in danger? And can we go up there 
and I guess try to talk some sense into them and just let them know that by doing this stuff, you know, fake or not, when you open that doorway, like I always believe in order for a haunting to take place, you need to, something has to trigger that. And is it possible that this family has triggered something that could potentially be dangerous for the family? So we really just approach this case like we do any other case, is we listen to what the family has to say, we do the interviews, we go in and do our investigation, and whatever we're able to document or not document, you know, it's at the end of the day, it is what it is. I personally wasn't expecting to go in there and have shit flying around the house. I knew that wasn't gonna happen naturally. But if something did happen like that, we were at least there inside the house to find a string, to find a rope, to find magnets, you know, try to debunk what was going on. So part of me was like, I knew it just wasn't gonna happen because that stuff doesn't happen. And the other part of me was like, hopefully this happens so I can find out who's doing it and how they're doing it. And I think a lot of you guys who watched the live where myself and Liz went back inside the house, I kept trying to you know, get it through to her that if you guys continue down this path, you could bring in something that's not fake and really put yourselves in danger. So that was our main concern. I've interviewed thousands of people over the years and I have to say like interviewing Liz, at times it just felt like I was talking to a brick wall. So I mean, even within the house, there's some things that we were able to just go through and find rational explanations for. The door, you know, if it's open, it opens by itself. The rocking chair was the heater causing that to rock. We checked what we could check with for like strings and all that stuff. And I think the family was smart enough to know, one, not to try anything with us there filming. And two, if there was anything around the house, you know, that was already cleaned up and put away before we got there. Yeah, they'll put out the initial video and they're getting all this feedback and they're getting all this attention. And then you have to continue to feed that. And then the more you feed it, the more attention you get. So all of that stuff we were aware of. So I just want everybody to know, like our main focus, we set the videos aside. I mean, we knew initially that, you know, that wasn't something, anything that we were gonna focus on. Our focus was, have they opened a doorway and are they in danger? And another thing, if this was just Liz and Jorge and they were creating these videos and having this haunting take place, we would have never even considered it. The fact that there were children involved, that's why we took on the case. So yeah, that was another question that people had is why did we take on this case? It was mainly because of the children. If something evil does, is conjured up and brought inside this house. You know, we talk with the family on camera, we talk with the family off camera, and you guys can see on the live, you know, I told Liz, if you continue to mess with this shit, things could get really bad and things could get really serious. Anytime you work with the family, you give them the advice, just from what we've learned over the years as far as dealing with hauntings, how dangerous things can get. Some families heed that warning and make the necessary changes. Other families, they kind of blow it off and continue with whatever they're doing. And all we can do as investigators is do the best job to our ability and just hope that the family makes the changes. And 95% of the time, the families do make the changes and you know, things end up better. It was just the amount of people that reached out to us about the case. And we told them, you know, if the family really, really wants help and really wants to resolve things, reach out to us. And they did. And they'd already had up to that point, millions of people following them on TikTok. I think we have what, 30,000 people following us on TikTok. So they weren't gonna gain anything from us coming up there and investigating. If anything, it could potentially hurt them and what they're doing because if we come up there and we document no evidence, if we come up there and shit's not flying around the house, you know, people are only going to really assume that what they're doing is fake. We've worked with so many different families and so many investigations. I mean, we know what signs to look for. 
Um, anytime you go into an investigation, you always approach it as a skeptic because you hear a lot of stories, you see a lot of evidence, whether it be pictures or videos. So I would say with this case, 100% like the videos had no bearing on us taking the case or not. It was more so, are they being put into danger, if that makes sense. I think people who, teams out there, there's all kinds of teams across the country, across the world that work with families and do family cases. And a lot of you guys know how complex family hauntings can be. And you know, at the beginning of the video, we pointed out that we did not we do not stand by any of their footage that they documented. We asked the question, could this be some elaborate hoax? I'd asked them during the interview about them faking stuff. When I had Liz one-on-one, -on -one, you know, explaining to her at some point, you know, this has all got to stop. And you have to put yourself, you have to put your family and all that stuff in um, ahead of TikTok views and all that stuff. And as you guys know, with the investigation, we went in, we didn't document anything crazy. I mean, I remember there was the high EMF. There were other things that we experienced. I mean, the house itself, like legit had a heavy feel to it. And I think a lot of that is just messing with the Ouija boards, having all the dark stuff, the chair with 666 and all that stuff in it. I mean, it just got like a real heavy, creepy feeling to it. That stuff we can't deny. Some of the stuff we can't explain. When you do an investigation, you don't look at one little piece of evidence. Like if I went into a house and ran a spirit box session and got responses, and that's the only thing that we documented, then I would say this house is probably not haunted. If I went in and got a uh, REM pod went off and that's all we got, I would say this house is not haunted. So when you run your investigation, the reason you want run so many different pieces of equipment, the reason you pay attention to how your body feels, the cold spots, things like that, is because at the end of the day, you take everything and put it together and you have to decide, was there enough there to prove that this place could be haunted? We never tell anybody, oh yeah, you got a demon in your house. Oh yeah, your house is 100% haunted. All we do is we go in, we document whatever we can document, our personal experiences, the equipment, the responses, and put it all together. We do the cleansing and then we share that with the family. So the big thing with this case was we wanted to go in, talk with the family, try to explain to them the dangers, do a full house cleansing. And hopefully if there was something there, you know, at the end of the day, it would all be better. Unfortunately, they continued with things. All we can do is go in and do the best job that we can do. And at the end of the day, we can't determine what other people do once we leave. So hopefully that helps explain why we went there and our whole reasoning behind it. We have so many of these cases reach out to us. So many people from all over the world reach out to us about some high profile cases. And we typically just avoid those. Just one, we don't we would rather focus our time, energy, and money on people who legitimately need and want the help. This just happened to be one of those cases where we thought we could get through to the family and explain to them that, you know, this could be potentially get out of control and you're putting innocent people in danger. And that was kind of our whole thought process behind this because we just genuinely, the three of us, enjoy trying to help people. And that's the big thing is just, you know, we try to do the best that we can do. We've been doing this for 20 years, worked with thousands and thousands of families from all over the country. And just occasionally you'll run into cases like this. So yeah, hopefully that helps clear up some of the questions that you guys had as far as, you know, what we thought of the videos, why we went to investigate the house, I never want to tell people what they can and cannot watch. I just say anytime you watch anything, especially to deal with the paranormal, just always watch it with an open mind and make your own determination what you feel about it. And you know, I'm not out to try to change people's minds. I mean, even with the paranormal, I'm not out to try to make people believe in the paranormal or to believe in the afterlife or anything like that. All we do is we enjoy sharing people's stories we enjoy listening to people and 
we just have a strong passion for trying to do whatever we can do to help people. And we greatly appreciate all the support from you guys, the prayers. And with this family, I'm going to continue to pray for them. And hopefully that, you know, they see the light and make some changes. So thank you guys all. Don't forget Friday night, brand new episode. We're at the Randolph County Asylum. That place is always off the hook. Also, leave a comment below. What do you think? Do you think people can, whether it's fake or not, is not really the question. The question is, can people do things like this and conjure up evil things inside their house? So thank you guys. Everybody have a wonderful day. Team Nightmare. Peace out. Love you guys.